In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to prep your hair for a wig even when your hair is really thick and slippery. Now you may be looking at this model and thinking, oh my gosh, my hair is way thicker than hers. This technique is not gonna work for me. I'm just gonna bounce. Well, don't do that. That's not true. These techniques should work for you and I'm gonna show you different ways to adjust them depending on how thick your hair is. Now I'm gonna start off with my favorite technique for wig prep, which I use on myself, which is very simple. It's just two braids and you wrap them behind your head like this. I often see people wrapping them around the front of their head like this instead, but this doesn't work very well, especially if your hair is very, very thick, thicker than this model's, because you'll see bulging of hair behind the ear. Also, don't overlap the braids with each other. You want it like this, not like this, because you can create a bulging effect in the back. Again, if her hair were thicker, you'd really see it bulging out. And the goal is to make your hair as flat to your head as possible. If your hair is slippery and you're having trouble pinning it, use two crisscross bobby pins that will anchor them into place. You can also use bigger bobby pins. That really helps, especially with thick, silky, slippery hair. Now when I get to the front of her hair, I take a bobby pin, I turn it upside down so there's no bumps and lumps on the top of her head. Now when some people do this technique and they put their wig cap on, they feel their wig cap sliding back, which then makes their wig feel like it's sliding off. So this next technique I'm gonna show you is going to incorporate pin curls for anchoring and braids for speed. And it's a whole lot faster than pin curling your entire head. The biggest mistake I see people make when they're doing pin curls is they twist it too much. They twist and twist and they twist it into a rope that makes a bun that just juts out of the top of their head, which completely defeats the purpose of making pin curls. You wanna make them as flat to your head as possible and this just creates a whole bunch of lumps. Now when I do it, I do start with one or two twists around like a rope, which is technically not what you're supposed to do, but I feel like it gives it the tension it needs for me to start looping it around. And then I anchor it with two crisscrossing bobby pins. Now for my next pin curl, I'm gonna take all the hair on the side here, but if she had thicker hair, I would slice it in half and make two pin curls. The goal is to have flat sections on your head. So whatever size section you need in order to get it flat to your head, that's what you wanna do. So I start by twisting the hair once, then I wrap it around my finger to create the shape of the pin curl. I lay that curl flat on the head and do crisscross bobby pins again. Now with this particular section, I needed to add a few more bobby pins because the ends were sticking out and that's fine. Add as many bobby pins as you need to get it to lay flat and under control. So on the other side, I attempted to just wrap it around my fingers and not twist it into a rope a little bit first. And yeah, it worked, I was just struggling with it. I did feel like it wasn't as tight to her head as it was on the other side. Maybe it has to do with me being right-handed. Okay, so I have three pin curls around the front of her hairline, and I could just go to the back and do two braids like I did before, but I'm gonna add one more pin curl to the top of her head. This pin curl is really great because it gives you something to anchor your wig down onto. For example, I put a wig on my head and I wanna stick a large bobby pin through the wig into the hairnet, into the hair. And having a pin curl right there at the top of the crown of my head gives me something for that pin to lock into. I hope that makes sense. And even if that doesn't make sense, adding another pin curl to the top of your head is also a good idea because it makes the braids in the back thinner. So if you have really, really thick hair and the braids in the back were being too lumpy and making your wig not fit properly, adding a few more pin curls to the top of your head, remember keeping it really flat to your head, you're good to go. Now we're taking the braids, wrapping them around the head and anchoring them down with bobby pins. Now, if you're wearing this wig for theater, before you put the wig cap on is a great time to put your microphone on. I like to tape it down to the center of my forehead. And then I put my wig cap on top of that. This helps keep the microphone in place even if you have wig changes. So as you can see, as I'm putting this wig cap on Sarah's head, the netting of this wig cap is getting caught in the pin curls, which is kind of great because that's the whole point. The issue before was that the wig cap was sliding off and now the pin curls keep the wig cap in place a little bit better. 
Another thing that's handy to know is if you take the back of a rat tail comb like this or the back of a makeup brush, you can use it to shove hair up underneath the wig cap that might not have gotten underneath there. Now since this is a wig cap with a hole at the end, you see this edge is dangling so you can just tuck it down or up, whichever lies the flattest, and you take a pin like this and you pin it down. So these pin curls on the side of her head stop the wig cap from slipping back. Now you might still find that it's slipping a little bit and this is another technique that I've learned that can really help prevent a wig cap from slipping off. You take this type of hairpin, you grab a little bit of the wig cap, you wrap it around the outside of the elastic and you pin it in like this. And you do that around the whole perimeter. Here I'm showing you again. You grab a little bit of the wig cap and you wrap it around the elastic like this. Thank you so much for watching. In the description will be links to other videos about wig prep and favorite wig caps, as well as links to purchase wig caps that I've used in this video as well as in other videos. If you enjoyed this video and you learned something new, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks, bye.